我的我的，大家好，我是锁头，记得开中文的字幕咯，然后往左边 smash that like button to help the algorithm. Yo, big shout out and thanks to all you guys who made donations on last night's episode. Over 160 people donated to our channel. Thank you. You love me. You really love me. And also, because so many of you shared and liked and tagged on Instagram, this became the fastest growing video on our entire channel. <laughs> You guys are straight badass. So tonight, Amber Heard's sister gets tripped up during cross, and I found instances where Amber Heard may have perjured herself. Ah, <gasps> drama, my favorite. Now, before we start, I'm gonna answer a few of your questions and give you some insight into what to expect in the remainder of this trial. Many of you guys have been wondering what the hell is she looking at when she looks to the left side of the screen. She is looking at the jurors, but this is most likely because her lawyers have advised her to address the jury in order to gain sympathy. Now, this could work or it could backfire. Too much eye contact can make the jurors feel uncomfortable and make them feel their objectivity and neutrality are in question. Also, this trial was originally supposed to end tonight, but because there is so much evidence to be reviewed, they have extended the final date until next Friday, when we will finally get the verdict from the jury regarding the fate of Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. All right. So although she originally was not going to testify, Whitney Enriquez, aka Amber Heard's sister, took to the stand yesterday to testify for one hour in the trial. Now, as usual, we're going to focus on the cross examination, and this time they get a different lawyer to lead the questions. This lawyer is kind of clever. She likes to appear harmless and boring and list out the cold facts while slowly leading the witness into a trap. And by the time they realize they're fucked, it's too late. Gotcha, bitch. So watch how she leads Whitney through the staircase incident. You testified that Mr. Depp allegedly hit you during that incident, right? Yes. But you aren't sure if that contact was even meant for you, right? I honestly don't. I don't know what he was aiming for. My back was to him. And you weren't injured during that incident, right? No, I wasn't. And you didn't seek medical attention? No. And you saw your sister hit Mr. Depp on the stairs that day, right? After he struck me, yes. Now, after March 2015. You continued to have a close relationship with Mr. Depp, right? Yes. And you still loved him, of course. And you were there for him if he needed you, right? Of course. And in fact, just a couple of weeks after that staircase incident, you were still acting as the marriage counselor, weren't you? At some point, sure.、Uh, that fall, after the staircase incident, October 2015,、um, you claim you had seen Mr. Depp hitting your sister, and then in October 2015, you were actually still trying to reconcile him and your sister when they were fighting, right? Yes, I was asked to support. I was just trying to help what I thought they both wanted. I was just trying to support, or trying my best to support them the way that I thought I could. You still loved Mr. Depp at that point, right? I did. And you didn't think that he and your sister were past the point of no return, right? What I thought was irrelevant at that point. I, I really, it, those two were in love and they were working very hard. They wanted to be together. It seemed like so. I I just helped as best as I could. I don't know how else to describe it. Your sis, your sister still wanted to be with Mr. Depp, right? She loved him, and you didn't think they were past the point of no return. I don't know what you mean by that exactly. Okay. Do you recognize these text messages that you sent to Mr. Depp on October second, two thousand fifteen? Yeah, I recognize them. I think. Okay. You texted Mr. Depp and you said, "I love both of you so much, and would fucking stay out of it if I thought this shit were past the point of no return." But that's not where you guys are right now. Did I read that right? Yes. So you you didn't think they were past the point of no return in October 2015, right? At that point, clearly, I didn't. You wanted Miss Heard to stay with Mr. Depp even after you allegedly saw him hit her, right? That's really oversimplifying something that's far from simple.、Um, again, Amber was very much in love. So was Johnny. She's telling me that she wants something.、Uh, Whether or not I agreed to it or not, whether or not I was okay with what was happening, it wasn't my place. If my sister said that she still wanted to be with Johnny, and 
I, if I could help with that in any way, I was going to support her. I was going to be there for her to support that. Yeah, you, you didn't want to contradict your sister. I don't know if I'd characterize it that way. I just, I, again, I was trying to support my sister the best that I could or knew how or thought she wanted. And you say you wanted to protect her though, right? I don't know if I would categorize it as that. I was just trying to support my sister. So the lawyer made her point. If someone is smacking on your sister, and to an extent, smacking on you, why in the world would you spend so much effort to keep them together? That don't make no sense. Now, last night saw a lot of people testifying against Johnny Depp on Amber's behalf. And coincidentally, a lot of them were living in Johnny Depp's penthouse for free. So if you ask me, it's kind of whack that they're doing what they're doing now. But regardless, what matters most is if what they said convinced the jury. But if you'd like me to break down their testimonies in another video, leave a comment down below. Okay, so on top of everything we revealed yesterday, I also found three instances which could really hurt Amber Heard and two of them might actually be her perjuring herself. And of course, Camille Vasquez is at the center of all of it. Now the first one sees Camille Vasquez pointing out the fact that even though Amber accused Johnny Depp of sexual assault, there's a recording following the incident that doesn't quite match the tone of her accusation. Now, you describe Mr. Depp sexually assaulting you in the Bahamas of December 2015, right? That is correct. And that's the first time you ever claimed that Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you in the Bahamas. That is incorrect. You only submitted the confidential schedule in the UK claiming Mr. Depp had sexually assaulted you after Miss Roberts had said that she saw you on the island chasing, clawing at Mr. Depp. Isn't that correct? That is incorrect. Hence screaming when I spilled wine accidentally on you for falling asleep and screaming in front of my kids and freaking Jack out. And that's trying. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Johnny. That yeah. fucked him up, you know. I'm sorry I fucked your son up. No, it, it weirded him out. He'd never... I'm so sorry I, I fucked your kids up. He didn't fuck my kids up, but I'm it so was pretty sorry. fucking... It was pretty fucking weird for him, you know. Because I jumped up and screamed at him. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. You're right. I'm not surprised he's... I don't need your, uh, no, right, your clever uh, comebacks. Yeah, no. You're, you think you're controlling your, yourself? Your you is, think you're controlling your yourself? Your characters become so clear, especially when you use them. It's embarrassing for you. I'm going to walk away now because you're actually making, it, making me see you even worse. And believe you me, I'm not going to be calling you at 3 o'clock in the morning after I'm in the ambient. Think, oh, I'm gonna just fucking forgive me, Trust me, it is gross. I'm using the kids. I've done nothing but be there for them in a good way. And if you take that for granted, fine. Okay, you're right. Meet a woman who would not jump up and scream if she if things spilled on three times in a row. And I hope, I hope you're happy with whoever that is, because that would be a special kind of fucking person. No doubt. It's you and Mr. Depp in that recording, right? That's correct. And you're discussing what happened in the Bahamas in December of 2015, right? Uh, no, that's not correct. But we were discussing a part of it. You're discussing when you screamed at Mr. Depp in front of his children, correct? Uh, no, we were talking about a part of that argument. Including when you screamed at Mr. Depp in front of his children. That's not a fair characterization of what happened. Mr. Depp says you screamed at him when he accidentally spilled wine on you, correct? I realize that's what Johnny said. Yeah, and Mr. Depp tells you that this freaked out his son, Jack. Johnny often used other people to back him up in our arguments. You don't seem too concerned about that, do you? I had a lot of concerns. You don't seem, you don't mention Mr. Depp assaulting you in this recording, do you? That was not the point of that conversation. If I had gotten into the details of what happened to me with him, it would have been another fight. You just accused Mr. Depp of, quote, using his kids, right? And that record would often use other people, yes. And you challenge him to find a woman who will not, quote, jump up and scream if she has been spilled on three times in a row. That is correct. Not a woman who would put up sexual abuse, right? I was pointing out uh, the ridiculous nature of him expecting me not to react to something that basic. 
Now, although this segment may not seem like a big deal, what it does do is create doubt in the minds of the jury of whether or not Amber Heard's accusations are actually true. But this is nothing compared to what I'm about to show you next. Now, first, I need to give you a bit of background. TMZ, the very famous American tabloid magazine, was the first to break the story regarding Amber Heard's alleged abuse within hours of her filing the restraining order against Johnny Depp back in 2016. And that's all I'm gonna say. Ms. Heard, did you send a text message to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016, telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach Johnny. It's extremely important. Please tell him. I remember sending the text message that is in front of me right now to Jerry uh, and I would like I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him basically I didn't want him to find out online that I had or was about to file or I had already filed for divorce I wanted him to know verbally so I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry, from me, so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. You done fucked up now! You slipped up there, didn't you, Miss Heard? You let it slip out that TMZ had been alerted to your filing of the domestic violence restraining order, didn't you? I disagree. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. TMZ is the same outlet that you released the video of Mr. Depp attacking the kitchen cabinets the day before this deposition was taken, wasn't it? I didn't do that. I don't TMZ know how owns to do that. TMZ the copyright to that video now, doesn't it? I have no idea what TMZ owns. Did they owns. pay you for that? I never got paid for it because I had nothing to do with that. So TMZ was just lucky in getting the inside scoop to your divorce from Mr. Depp, huh? I have no idea. It is not, that's not my area of ex expertise. I wouldn't even know how to do that. And also, what does that get me? If I wanted to leak things about Johnny, I could have done that in a much more successful way, in a bigger way, for years. Not when years. you were extorting him for $7 million? I got a fraction of what I was entitled to in the state of California, by the way. So when she says she got a fraction of what she's entitled to in the state of California, what she's talking about is the fact that California is what many men consider the divorce capital of the world, where even in short-term marriages, many divorce settlements often result in the husband paying half in marital assets and up to 40% of his income will go to her for spousal support. Hey! I take half his shit. Oh, and in some cases, the court can order the husband to pay for his wife's lawyer as well. Kind of like funding your own execution. And speaking of execution, this next video might be a perfect example of Amber holding the ax right above her head when she commits the ultimate what the fuck moment. Miss Heard, you testified yesterday that this is a photograph taken of you on May 21st, 2016. Do you recall? Yes, that's correct. Uh, you testified yesterday that this is another photograph of you on the night of May 21. That's correct. Miss Heard, you testified yesterday that this is also a photograph of you from the same night, correct? That is correct. You testified yesterday that the only difference between these two photographs is that the light was turned on. That's what it appears to be, yes. The light is on on both of these pictures though, isn't that right? It looks to me like the one on the left has the vanity light, the makeup lights, you know, the more yellow hued ones that go around the mirror on, and then the one on the right looks like it doesn't have those. Isn't it true you just edited these photographs? No, I've never edited a photograph. Didn't you just enhance the saturation for one of these photos to make your face look more red? Uh, no, that's incorrect. I didn't touch it. You were sitting here in this courtroom when Mr. Isaac Baruch testified to see you, seeing you the week after May 21, 2016, correct? I was here. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you on May 22nd while you were changing the locks of your penthouse. Do you recall that testimony? I do. I just don't know if he was right about the date, but I do remember him saying that. Mr. Baruch testified that he saw you repeatedly in the days following also, correct? That's correct. And Mr. Baruch testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face, correct? That is what he's testified to. You were also here in this court when Mr. Sean Bett testified to seeing you on the evening of May 21, 2016. Is that right? That's correct. Mr. Bett also testified that he saw no marks or injuries on your face that evening, correct? I realize that's what he said. 
You were sitting here in this courtroom when Officer Melissa Sines testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21st, 2016, right? I saw her testimony, yes. And you heard Officer Sines testify that she did not see any injuries on you that night, correct? I heard her testify she did not consider this injured. No. Ms. Officer Sines testified that she met with you and she did not see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct? She did not consider this injury. Ms. Hurd, my question is a bit more nuanced. You sat in this courtroom while Officer Sines testified that she saw you the night of May 21, 2016, face to face and didn't see any injuries on your face. Isn't that correct, Ms. Hurd? I believe she was testifying about these photographs and she said that I was not injured in them. Is it your testimony under oath now that Officer Sines testified that she saw injuries on you when she saw you in person on May 21? Sorry, let me clarify. I was testifying that I know that that's what Officer Sines said, that she didn't consider my red puffy face injured. That's what she said. The red puffy face, that was your counsel's question, correct? Uh, that was she her said, testimony in the UK. That's incorrect, and you know that, Ms. Hurd. I disagree. It's just inconvenient for you that Officer Science didn't see injuries on you on May 21, 2016. Isn't it doesn't that matter right? what's convenient for me. Right. Officer Tyler Haddon also testified by deposition about being called to the Eastern Columbia building on May 21, 2016, and he also testified no injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that correct? They both said that they did not consider me injured. They did not see injuries on your face on May 21, 2016. Isn't that what their testimony was? What their testimony was is that they did not consider what my face looked like to be injury. They didn't consider what they walked on in the house damaged, but it was. So after this, I had to go back and hear exactly what those officers said. Today's episode is brought to you by the word receipts. Having receipts is when you have evidence from the past that shows that what someone is telling you in the present is not at all true. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you evidence 087. In now, the hallway, how far were you standing from this herd? Two to five feet. And at that time, did you notice any injuries on this herd? I did not. Uh, were you looking to see if she had any injuries at that time? Yes, I was. And when you say if there's evidence of a crime, would injuries and property damage constitute evidence of a crime? Did you have any reason to believe that Amber Heard created any injuries to herself or to uh, the property at the time you were there on May 21st, 2016? No, I don't recall seeing any damaged property or her obtaining any injuries or having invisible injuries that I saw. Oh my God. Now, this is a civil case, which means that perjury charges can't be filed, but that doesn't stop them from being brought up in another separate case. And if they can prove that Amber indeed did perjure herself, then she will find herself in jail. Now remember, Johnny Depp's team are fighting an uphill battle because they have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Amber Heard's article caused Johnny to lose his film roles and his reputation. Now, with tonight being the last day of this week for testimonies and cross, things are getting pretty tight as based on trial lawyer experts, next week we'll most likely see what's known as rebuttal, where Depp and Heard's lawyers have the opportunity to recall witnesses or call witnesses that they've been keeping in pocket and to the last minute to drop a bomb. And this might very well explain why Camille kept launching attacks without backing them up yesterday. Perhaps she'll be releasing some serious bombs next week that may completely change the outcome of this trial. So does Johnny Depp have a chance to redeem himself and get justice or is his fate already sealed and doomed to fail? Let me know what you think in the comments down below and until then I'll see you on the flip side. Peace!